Make sure you share it and uh, do all that tagging stuff to get folks to, to get on board. Little children, get on board. We're going to start off with a word of prayer, and I need you to start typing in uh, here your prayer requests and praises if you have them for uh, just a little bit. But uh, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you for joining us tonight uh, via Rushing Wind Radio and Facebook and YouTube later. And uh, thank you for being a part of our worship hour. I hope you'll let folks know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing. Father, we ask your blessing here tonight. Lord, we cannot do anything of value without you. And Lord, we need to decrease and you increase. We ask your Holy Ghost to fill us and use us. Uh, speak to us in unusual ways tonight. Uh, those all listening around the country, around the world, uh, Lord, would you use our ministry to help people come to know you Help it not to be about us, but about you, God. Uh, uh, speak through the songs, the, uh, the preaching, the prayer requests, the praises. Thank you for loving us like you do. Thank you for Jesus dying for our sins. Uh, now speak to us. We do humbly ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to stand, let's stand and sing all four stanzas of Just Over in the Glory Land, 248 in your hymn book. seated in your home. Thank you for joining us and again please let folks know uh, to get on board and let's watch the service tonight being looking forward to Sunday starting Sunday uh, and Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night we're going to start the drive-in uh, drive-in services and we're going to do that. We'll still live stream and do everything we're doing for uh, some of you that can't drive or can't get here or whatever, but uh, we do want to try to get back to normal. I, I do believe within the next few weeks we'll be getting back to normal. We're planning on having services within the church, 
And uh, we will have bathrooms open uh, this time. I think it's safe enough to do that. And uh, if you feel unsafe to come inside but need to come inside, you're welcome to hand sanitizers at the door. And there's, you can wear a mask if you want to. But uh, we're going to still uh, have uh, drive-in service where we get to hear you honk the horn instead of saying amen. Uh, if there is inclement weather, like we know it's just going to be a knockdown, drag out, stormy uh, morning, then we'll just we'll just go back inside because uh, it's a little hard to listen with the window down if it's raining. Amen. So that wouldn't be fun. Uh, but uh, you pray for those, and I know uh, some. Uh, let let me get this out. Some people may not agree, and some people may have uh, reservations, and that's okay. Uh, I have to make a de uh, an executive decision as a pastor. I believe the Lord put it on my heart to say we need to start doing this consistently. Uh, it's a little extra work for us, but uh, I think it'll be worth it to get us back in out of our pajamas and into uh, church clothes and come to church and, and uh, turn your Bibles. It's just a little bit easier to get back into that uh, habit. So you pray for those services as they are coming up, uh, of course, Sunday at 10 a.m. Oh, it would be great if uh, maybe Chris, Chris and Hunter and Sarah, y'all make pancakes for everybody and y'all will hand them out. We'll come to the, uh, we'll let Junior hand them out. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> we'll get roller skates for Junior and let Junior and Gary roller skate. <laughs> you got two new hips. Yeah, he's got two new hips. That's good. Um, but uh, I'm, uh, it's been a beautiful <laughs> couple days, beautiful weather outside. Uh, I want you to think of a praise that you have, just something you want to praise the Lord to let folks know. We're going to go over those in just a moment. Kelly's back there, and she's got a microphone. Uh, but uh, I, <clears throat> I want to praise the Lord for getting my car, one of my cars inspected. Uh, it's like uh, it's like going to the doctor, taking a car to the doctor. You're just afraid they're going to say, you got to fix this. And I didn't want them to fix anything. I, mean, I just wanted them to say it's okay, and they did. They charged me the 13-something and sent me on my way but uh uh anyway all right we'll start with some prayer requests uh there we have we only have one prayer request there must, must be a tremendous amount of praises tonight where everybody's outside uh around the bonfire and we're <laughs> hungry here uh anybody got any food they want to bring up here you can leave it at the door uh we'll eat it in between songs no but what's that one prayer request there um miss candy requested prayer for their nephew in the hospital in Pennsylvania, and of course the Eddie Bryan, Josh and Tennille. Josh and Tennille, yes. And Miss Retha just asked a prayer request for her cousin in West Virginia, who's a nurse that has tested positive for COVID-19. And her name is Sarah. Okay. We'll be praying for Retha and the uh, Dyer family. <laughs> Jason, Jason's the nephew. Okay, pray for him, Eddie, and Brian, and Tennille, Joshua, and the Grand Youngins, and Retha, and th thank you for joining us, Retha, and having a prayer request. Now, I want everybody that's listening that can type it, that knows how to type, uh, or they can do all that stuff on the computer, I, I want to praise tonight. We need to have a praise service, so type them on in there, all right? Okay, what else you got there? Um, the Myers asked for prayer for their family, but we do have our first praise Miss Kay said that Mr. David got his feeding tube out. Amen. Woo! Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, David, you're doing good. That's wonderful. You're going to be, uh, be up up and out before long. Isn't it terrible now? You're, you're able to get up and out, but you can't get up and out. But uh, uh, thank the Lord that Kay, uh, uh, that you all went up there and got that feeding tube out on the road of recovery. Anybody else? Uh, Miss Linda Fry said, praise God for our health and keeping us safe and thanking him for the beautiful days. Um, Miss Pat said, praise that God's protected them during this situation with her having to work and that Shelby's winding down her first year of grad school. Oh, yeah. Fun, fun. Yeah, Shelby's in graduate school and she's been, I think, works in the nursery down there and does all sorts of stuff. Yeah, God has been good. Keep us all... As far as I know, still we, we have no cases within our church nor within uh, immediate people, a family that's that's local. Uh, there may be some that lives far off, but we've been really blessed uh, with that. And as far as I know, too, uh, in Brunswick County, there's only uh, a little over 20 that is still confirmed having it in quarantine. So uh, we've been blessed to have very, very low numbers. And again, God good, that's worthy to say amen. We've, we've done some tremendous 
quarantining and, and mitigation. And, uh, but I think God's just been merciful to us. Amen. Go ahead. Any more? Okay, we've got some praises. Miss Retha said, praise God for saving her and that she knows that she is. Um, we've got Amen. praises that we, Miss Keena has been blessed to be able to use her riding lawnmower this summer. Amen. And she had a burden lifted. So praise God. She said, God is good. Amen. All the time. And God then we've, is... we've got some prayer requests. Um, we asked for prayer for our leaders in our country and for Miss Susan's back. And uh, Miss Brandy asked for prayer for a Rebecca Ratliff who has COVID. And we have a praise. It's Mr. John Stolmeyer's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, let's say I, I'm surprised you didn't play there. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Anybody else had a birthday? I think there's a birthday coming up. Elizabeth is having a birthday. You watching Elizabeth? Going to be the big one four. Uh, if, you, if you don't watch real quick, it'll be the big four one for long. It, it moves quick. But happy birthday, John Stolmeyer. Right? John is uh, just a little over 30, right? Amen. We're going to sing, everybody? Yeah. You ready? All right. Happy birthday to you. Amen. They're going to probably censor that because that's supposedly a copyrighted song. I believe that. I hope you had a great day, John. And I don't know if you got, uh, uh, let us know if you went to Bernie's. Is it open? Because it is essential. Bernie's, of course, is that, that cake place, donut place from heaven. So in Southport, you know, those, those, uh, those croissants filled with... Amen. All right. Is that all we got there? Uh, we've got some more praises. Uh, Miss Stella said, praise God for his unconditional love, her salvation for her children and grandchildren and wonderful friends. Amen. And then Miss uh, Faye wants to praise the Lord that he saved her and that she knows it. And blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Okay. Amen. And she likes that song. I know. That's her favorite song. Miss Tina her. asked for prayer that she's been put back on antibiotics for bronchitis. Okay, pray for Kena. And Ms. Janice said Bernie's is open tomorrow. Oh, I know where somebody's going to be somewhere at Bernie's. And Ms. Uh, Janet asked for, uh, she said, praise that Brooklyn's doing better and the whole family's getting closer to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am so hungry right now. My stomach's roll. I mean, it's going, it's going, where's the food at? Uh, there's chicken? Oh, Lord, I don't need no candy. I'm trying to abstain. That's why I'm so hungry. If I, uh, you, you know, when you cut out carbs, you ain't got a lot to eat. Hot dogs. Amen. Uh, all right. Well, let's do this. Have we got any more? Uh, praise that Mr. Less is doing a lot better, Miss Norma said. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, he had a motorcycle accident. That is a blessing. Let's, uh, let's also pray for our missionaries uh, and our school. Let's pray for... Our bus ministry and all those kids, we've been trying to keep track of those and the parents. And uh, let's pray for our teenagers within our church, of course, all the teenagers, uh, <coughs> for salvation and for help through their, as they struggle through these, these, these times, too, because they're bored to death, I'm sure. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, Phyllis Watson's dad is six again, or? Uh, but, okay. Uh, let's pray for Phyllis's dad, um, uh, and, and he has blood pressure problems, and he's uh, getting up in age, but uh, God is able. Amen? We can pray for him. Uh, and is there anybody else? We'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, praises. I was trying to think of anything else. Uh, oh, uh, I appreciate Brother Michael Wolford's going to take care of the lawn this week, I think he said. And if there's somebody who can help out with weed eating, weed eating, uh, the weed whacker, whatever, and, uh, and, and all you fellows and guys that have worked with uh, the lawn, if, uh, if you're still wanting to do that this uh, summer, uh, shoot me a text and, uh, or call me and let me know, and we'll try to get in the rotation schedule for you. But thank you for everybody uh, handling the, the yard outside. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer for, and praise him for these praises and also for the prayer request. Father, we bow before you tonight thanking you that you are our ever-present help in time of need. 
Thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us and given us beautiful weather. You've given us things that we don't deserve at times. Uh, uh, you've just poured out great things. Another birthday for some. Another uh, thank you for opening Bernie's for so many that's been waiting. And Lord, we uh, thank you for a good spirit and for uh, uh, just the love that you shed abroad on us. And God, for lifting burdens and for answering prayers, for healing people, God, for saving people. Thank you for doing that for us and answering our prayers. And I do thank you for my mom and, and, and my sister, my brothers. And I do pray for my dad for salvation. And pray, Lord, for Candy and Gary's family, his nephew, Jason and Eddie. And Lord Brian, you know there's physical needs, but Joshua and Tennille and the kid, grandkids helped him spiritually, I pray. And Lord, we lift up Retha's cousin, Sarah, that has the COVID-19. Uh, I thank you, Lord, that the, the virus is, is fading, but I know there's still some people uh, that uh, are contracting and help them recover very quickly. Pray for the Myers family and the decisions they're making. And, uh, Lord, we pray for uh, the Dickens family as well. And uh, for our leaders in our country, our president, our vice president, our governor, Lord, give him some sense. I, I pray, Lord, that uh, we wouldn't prolong this shutdown uh, any longer than it has to be. Lord, lift up Susan's back to you that she'd get some relief tonight uh, for Brandy and uh, that request there for Rebecca and Kena. Uh, Lord, uh, meet those physical needs uh, for little Brooklyn. We thank you and praise you for David getting his uh, feeding tube out, for meeting the needs here financially at the church, for, the, for our missionaries having their needs met. Thank you for our school and thank you for our teachers. Thank you for all that you do. Lord, you love us. Uh, thank you for the music, for the radio program, for the FBI, for uh, Kelly working in the sound, and Lord, uh, everybody else that does all the little things around here. We thank you for them. looking forward, Lord, to get back into uh, the routine of things. Uh, thank you for Tina and the beautiful flower here that she replaced today or recently. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do for us and to us and through us. Open our hearts and minds for the reading of your word. and. Uh, Lord, give us that need that we have tonight that's going to help us draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time to sing again, so we'll sing uh, the next song and uh, take your hymn books out. If you don't know the hymn, book, hymn uh, you will. Faith is the victory. And that, that one's not in the book. But we'll, we'll get that one. You'll know the first line, please. Faith is the victory. song it's a good song well, junior's going to sing for me preaching uh so uh, he's he's already he's going to sing 
an, an old favorite for folks. Yeah, I, I came, I came. Oh, okay. I came my, my all right. He's saying we're all in the nursing home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this song here is, they love it at a nursing home. And matter of fact, I hope Ken Thompson in Florida is listening right now. I got this CD from him. This is Where Could I Go But To The Lord. All right. Hope you enjoy this one right here. Living this world. Start me over again. I'm, I'm sorry. Pardon me. You ever try to you think of something, got something else on my mind, and what, what even on the song? <clears throat> Living below. In this old simple world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving along to face temptation, so where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand. With friends I love so dear Comfort I get from God's own word Yet when I face the chilling hand of death Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Seeking a refuge for my soul Needing a friend to save me in the end Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul Needing a friend to save me in the end Where could I go but to the outside everybody outside welcome welcome all the cars and I believe we've got someone uh, that's joining us a visitor we appreciate you coming my wife was telling me uh, somebody sitting out there outside listening so I'm gonna have her sing for you since she's here you're hurt you're hearing the best tonight you're hearing junior and you're hearing Susan amen brother junior he Susan. said huh huh not Susan. Oh, I'm not not Susan this is this is <laughs> Leslie yeah, I messed up. See, Junior? Since 
the day that I surrender many years have come and gone joy and sadness I remember Lord you were faithful all along you brought me It is awesome how God works things out. Uh, Leslie didn't have uh, any idea what I'm preaching tonight, but I am preaching on that thought that uh, Psalm 62 in your Bible, uh, David was up against some problems. He was in distresses. He was having issues like we all uh, all have from time to time. And uh, you know, you know, uh, you'll meet people and you say, "Boy, they've got some issues. Uh, they've they're in distress. They're having problems. They're." They're having a hard time. And David here in Psalm 62, he's having that. The scholars, uh, the Bible scholars, says that this psalm is dealing with either uh, the fact that David was in captivity uh, up against Saul when Saul was uh, chasing after him, or it could be the issues he was having with his son Absalom, you know, his rebellious son. Uh, but it's amazing uh, this particular psalm. I'll give you a little bit. I'll, I'll do it a little bit backwards here, then I wrote it out is that David in this psalm, he verbalizes, he begins to talk uh, to the Lord and to himself. And uh, in my points tonight, we'll deal with that. We need to remember in times of distresses, I guess, remember what God has done for you in the past. And uh, here this, this psalm does that. If you're able to stand and reverence the reading of God's Word, would you please stand? Psalm 62, uh, Psalm of David, truly, 
My soul waiteth upon the Lord. From Him cometh my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a, a bowing wave uh, or a bowing wave shall be, ye be as a the tottering fence. Uh, they only consult to cast him down from uh, his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. Now that word selah means to meditate. So David's talking out loud. He's talking to himself. That's the title of the message. We need to talk to ourselves. And he's stopping right there and he says, Boy, I need to meditate on what I just said. Wow. Boy, I just need to meditate on that. And then he continues verse 5. He kind of starts over again. Notice that? My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. You know what I could add there? I'm not adding to the Word of God, but David's saying, I ain't looking at man for anything. I've got to look to God. And he says this in verse 6, He is only... He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation, my glory, the, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. And then he says that word Selah again. He's taking a little break in his talk to himself. In verse 9, Surely men of low degree are, degree are vanity, and men of high degree are high. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in opposition. I believe David's talking to himself. He's saying, trust not in opposition and become not vain in robbery. If, you, if riches increase, he's saying, David, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. If you get a stimulus check, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this. David's talking that power belongeth unto who? God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. Father, in Jesus' name, speak through me. Help me, uh, Lord, set my feet upon that rock and help me talk to myself a little bit tonight. May the hearers of, of listening... May those that are in the congregation, wherever they're at, may they learn something from Your Word. May they first realize that they need You as Savior. And if they're lost and undone without You, if they're, they're headed for a devil's hell, Lord, I pray that tonight would be the night that they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Would they ask You to come into their heart. Lord, speak to them, I pray. And the others that are saved, that they be willing to examine themselves, whether they be in the faith, and doing like they ought to, and, and Lord, repent if need be. God, help us to walk close to you tonight, and help us to talk to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Uh, before I get into this, I want, you, I want to say this, is that most people don't understand talking to yourself. I know some of y'all talk to yourself all the time, but uh, most people will go to other people and get a talk from them. But, uh, you know, when you get a talk from, from other people, they're going to give you their counsel, but uh, sometimes you may not like that counsel. So why don't you, before you go to a counsel, is just have a talk with yourself and counsel yourselves. And, da and David was in a position, obviously, at least, he could not uh, find a counselor or someone to, uh, to uh, kind of a, a sounding board and someone to get guidance. So he just opened up and started talking to himself. He was feeling distressed. He was feeling overwhelmed, as all, honestly all of us uh, get at different times of the day when we're not busy and you're kind of thinking about how our culture, uh, country is going and what the governor and the president are saying and the, the deaths that are out there and the, the virus that's looming and what do we do? Uh, David was overwhelmed. He was stressed to the core. But we find him uh, here. And, and I, I want to say that I'm glad that uh, that uh, we can we can read that even kings get distressed at times even kings get overwhelmed at times and in these times of distresses and problems uh, we need to learn to talk to ourselves we need to uh, seek counsel of course we talk to God but here I believe David is is talking to himself and what uh, we say to ourselves uh, what David said to himself uh, can affect the outcome. 
Talk of trouble makes it double. And here David learned that if, that if what he said was truth, what he would say to himself is truth based upon the Word of God, then he's almost got the victory. He's just going to lie and wait. He's not going to be distressed. He's not going to feel backed in the corner. He's not going to feel overwhelmed. But as he talks to himself, and he talks truth to himself, uh, that he gets himself out of the ditch. He gets himself out of the corner. He gets himself unloaded. And we see that, that in these verses here tonight. Uh, through verses, the verses uh, 1 through uh, 12 here, we see David talks to himself. And the first thing we notice is that David repeats certain truths over and over. There are some certain truths that we as believers have to repeat in times of distresses. you got to get it on your mind and on your heart at all times. Uh, uh, thy word is a lamp in thy feet and a light in thy path. Uh, we have the word of God that we, we tell ourselves and repeat over. And David uh, was repeating what would become the, uh, the very word of God, being led of the Holy Ghost, saying, how can I get out of this trouble with Saul? And, and how can I get out of this trouble with my son Absalom? And he repeats certain truths. Verse number one, he says, truly, my soul waiteth upon upon God. From Him cometh my salvation. There's a truth. Amen? Not only salvation eternal wise, but salvation from the distresses that He was in. He goes a little further. Verse 2, He is my rock. He doesn't say pebble. He doesn't say stone. He doesn't say sand. But He declares Him as to be something sufficient, something substantial, and that's called a rock. The rock of what? Salvation. Meaning that His, his faith, His salvation is built upon nothing less than Jesus Christ, His righteousness. He continues to elaborate in talking to Himself. See, some people will talk to himself and you'll say, I'm all right, okay, I'll, I'll be all right, suck it up, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, and you're still not okay. It's when you get to the point where you can do as David has done and repeat spiritual truths, repeat these certain truths that he is uh, one to wait upon. He is one that uh, brings salvation. He is your rock, your salvation, but he's also your defense. I shall... Not. He first says greatly moved. I think he's given himself a pep talk. And we're going to read verse 5 and 6 and verse 7 and 8. He continues and says some of the same things he's repeating. He's repeating. He's repeating. It's kind of like the little train that could. Uh, you know, that little story where he got at that big mountain and, and he just didn't think he'd get it. He said, I think I can, I think I can, I can. And he kept on thinking he can and he got up over the hill. Well, we as believers, the stresses and the problems and uh, whether it's the virus or whether it's your, uh, your thought process, your finances, your wage, your whatever it is, your family issues, we have got to, in times of trouble and in distresses, repeat the certain truths. What are those truths? He, oh, my soul needs a weight on God. God. Uh, my soul needs to remember He's my salvation. My soul needs to remember He's my rock. Uh, he's my defense. He's my Lord. And, and I will not be moved. Verse 5, look what he says. My soul wait thou only upon God. Now this, he's repeating this within the same psalm. He says, my soul wait, my soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from Him. So he changes up a little bit of the thought. And he's telling himself, you know what? No doubt he was thinking that well, my, my soldiers, my, uh, my captains and my, uh, my generals will come to my rescue. My family will bow down and follow me. And at some point between the beginning of Psalm 1, 62, 1 and Psalm verse 5, 62, 5, he finally had to say, My expect, I gotta quit expecting everybody else to bail me out. I gotta quit expecting everybody else to come to my defense and be my salvation and be my help. I gotta quit waiting on everybody else but my expectation, my salvation, my defense, my everything. I, I'm repeating it over and over is from the Lord. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In verse 6, he changes. He says, I shall not be greatly moved in verse 2. And then he leaves out greatly. And I think in, I'm thinking here, this is what comes to my mind. Can I get an amen here? Is that it's working. In, in verse 2, he He's having to repeat, man, I shall not greatly be moved. I'm not her boy. But then by the time he gets to verse number six, he's, he is the, the, the talk to himself. He's a pretty good pep talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going hey, to be moved now. 
I'm not going to be worried about greatly moved or being moved at all. And then we get down to verse 7. And he says it again. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us, see all. The more he talks about what God has done for him, I believe you see, the better it gets. The understanding, his, his fears, his distresses are melting away. He's starting to understand that, yes, I'm remembering now all the times God's helped me. I'm remembering all those things. He's been faithful to me in the past. He's been faithful in the past. He's been faithful today. But I want you to see the difference of what's happened between a verse 1 and 2, 5 and 6, and then go to 7. In verse 7, a little something different happens. He begins to place this in God. In verse number, um, it says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. Uh, and then verse 5, it says, Wait thou only upon God. But then in verse 7, it changes a little bit. And it says, In God is my expectation. Uh, in verses 1 and 2 and 5, he describes God as his rock, his defense. But in verse 7, he describes God as his refuge. I believe David's thought takes him from being about to be overcome, uh, about to be overcome, and he takes him to that to being God is my rock and my defense. He's, he's starting to verbalize what, he, what God is. God is my defense. He's going to protect me. God is my rock. He's going to establish me. But then his mind goes to this next level in verse number 7. He moves to saying, God, He is my refuge. What is refuge? It's a place that provides shelter, provision, and protection. Where in the first verses he's talking about God as, as being a defense here and he's being a rock here and he's being salvation here. But now he, he puts it all together. He puts it all together. He says, you know what? I'm giving myself a pretty good pep talk. Hey, God's not just my salvation, my defense, and my rock. He's my refuge. That means, and not just, he, he, I'm on the refuge. I'm in the refuge. I'm in God. And that's a whole lot better, isn't it? As he talks to himself about who God is to him, he paints a picture of a fortress. He's my refuge. It's a fortress. Did you know the psalmist wrote in Psalms 18 too, church? The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, uh, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. You know what Dave was doing there? He's giving himself talk. That's who God is to me. God is my fortress. God is my refuge. That's in whom I can go into God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, behold, all things are come to pass. All things are made new. If you, any man be in, and here David is giving himself a pep talk, repeating those valuable, important truths that all those distresses and enemies are against you, problems you're facing. He's saying, I'm, I've got a God that's a fortress. I've got a God that's a refuge. Psalms 91 says it again in verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. In times of distresses, wait. David waited on God, didn't want to wait on anybody else. Man, you ever try to wait on somebody that's going to come to help you and they never do? Or, or, or you wait, waiting on someone to fix something and they never really do it well? David got to a place in his life where the only person that could really help him, his captains, his generals, his family, his wives, none of them could help him but God. In times of distress, wait, look, and remember and repeat that God is your refuge. A refuge is a type of fortress, a defense, a, a salvation, a, ro a rock. Well, I'm going to tell you, think about that fortress. It's a fortress that's defend defendable. That God, it's God all around us. Uh, you, we pray these prayers, the psalmist says, put a hedge of protection around us. Hallelujah. That's, the, that's His Word. That's His promises that He's going to take us. Uh, hey, He did it yesterday. He's going to do it today. If He did it last year, He's going to do it again today. God is our refuge. In His discussion with Himself, you ever seen people talk to themselves? It's kind of funny. I'll... I'll, I'll uh, uh, or even pray, kind of pray to themselves. Joey, my, my former youth pastor, I love you, Joey, if you're watching. 
But Joey, when he when he was a youth pastor here, he would he would sometimes we would be standing around talking, and he'd raise his hands, he'd be kind of like this, and he'd go he's talking, he's praying, you know, he's not in tongues or nothing. But, you know, I thought, man, he's crazy. And as I've got as I've grown a little bit, I'm like, man, I like that. I envy that. I long to get to that place where, hey, I don't know what he was praying about, what he was talking about. Maybe he was giving himself a pep talk, but it's about time we need to start talking to ourselves and telling ourselves, repeating the truths of the Word of God. Hello, hey, God's going to provide for you. And you didn't know how you're going to make it because your job went out, but then a check come in the mail. Say amen. And you didn't know how the food was going to uh, hold out. But guess what? Walmart's still open. And you didn't know how, how, the, how the bathroom situation, but you find toilet paper somewhere. God's always going to help. In his discussion with himself, he does something that's very important a part of this message is he questions the fear. He questions fear. David had fear, just like you and I. Aren't you afraid? Sometimes I'm afraid. <clears throat> In verse 3, he says, How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? He's talking about these distresses. And you know what that, word, what that means? He, he's telling himself, How long... You imagine, it's made, it's made up. It's, it's, it's fake mischief. It's not as bad as it seems. And he says, he, Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a, a bowing wave shall, uh, shall ye be, as a tottering fence. He's talking to himself. He says, I'm not, hey, I'm questioning this fear in my life. I'm questioning this distress, this enemies, or whatever it might be. And hey, you're not going to last. You're not going to be there forever. He, he says, uh, uh, it's going, you're going to be slain. You're going to be just like a wave that comes and goes or like a tottering fence that doesn't stand. It's going to fall. Uh, they only consoled to, to cast him down from excellency. They delight in lies. He's talking about uh, these, this mischief and these foes against him. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah, he wants you to think about it a little bit. So David's talking to himself. Some people say he forgot to take his medication, but that was the medication he was taking. Amen. Sometimes you don't need what the doctor prescribes. You just need to talk with the Lord and make let everybody else think you're crazy because you're repeating stuff over and over and over. God is my strength. God is my shield. God is my refuge. God is my defense. God is my salvation. God is my strength. God is my refuge. God is my salvation. You see, that, that, can, that can get old, but you know what? You, you, you're talking to yourself, and then David's questioning, why should I fear? Why should I going to let this? Uh, why, why, what is this fear? It's just not going to, it's not really real. In verse 9, surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are, are a lie. <coughs> and to be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter. <clears throat> than vanity. And vanity means meaningless. So we all get afraid at times. And when that happens, we need to question it. Now let me give you a scenario. I'm going to embarrass Shepherd. He's at home. But when Shepherd was younger, I don't know, he watched a National Geographic or something where he, he, he saw a program, Wolves, or, uh, for bobcats. One of the bobcat he was afraid of. And when it would get dark, Shepherd, Shepherd didn't want to go outside you know, without a light. And, uh, and he was afraid of, of a bobcat. Uh, well, that's a real thing to be afraid of. Can I get a witness? I don't want no bobcat jumping on my leg and eating me up. Uh, but it's a real thing to be afraid of if you live where they live. And we don't live where they live. As far as I know, there's no bobcats around here that I know of. Maybe they are, and I'm, I'm in error. But my point being this is that David was reasoning with himself, and he says, why should I be afraid, or why should I um, imagine mischief against the man? What, what, what is it with me? I'm questioning what I'm afraid of. Are you really afraid of what you're supposed to be afraid of? When the only thing we ought to reverence and give due reverence to, respect, is the Lord Jesus. He was afraid of his enemy. So he asked the question, so he will have to give an answer. That's what I like about this thought. He questions the fear. He questions the fear to himself. So, so you, you say, what am I afraid of? Well, you've got to ask, answer that, don't you? If you ask that question, if you're under stress, if you're afraid, if you're, if you're overcome, if you've got problems, you say, what am I distressed over? What, what am I afraid of? What are my problems? Now you have to answer it. And then when you begin to talk it out, you begin to answer the question. And David does that. He lays it out. 
How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wave shall you be, as a tottering fence. The answer helps kill the, the fearing distress. So I think about if the doctor says you've got cancer. And, and that's a real fear. And, and some of you that have had cancer, I know it's got to be a, fra- a fearful thing to think of that. Or you've got heart problems or, or, or you're about to lose a loved one. But then you ask yourself the question, what am I really afraid of? And when you're honest with yourself, uh, if, so, if you've got cancer, man, if I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. I shouldn't be afraid of that. It helps melt away the fears and distresses. Paul questioned fear, uh, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament questioned fear of losing God's love. He was, he was questioning that in, in Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He asked this question. Who, who's going to separate me from the love of Christ? He no doubt had some anxiety that, that potentially could happen that somebody or something had, had inundated his brain, had convinced him in some way that is there a possibility that someone could separate us from the love of Christ. But as he spoke it outwardly, as he verbalized it and repeated a, a certain truth, he said, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all things he's answering him now in all these things we are more uh, than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded uh, that neither life, death uh, nor life nor angels nor principalities uh, nor power woo, glory uh, nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord Whew. I'm around I'm hungry you got to question that fear. Is it really valid, the fear? Perfect love casteth out fear. Those distresses is just birth, distresses is birth in fear. We know that. We all have enemies. We all have accusers of the brethren. Even our own fear. Even our own, own self-afflicted fear and things. David talked to himself. And he talked himself out of being distressed. And I I don't know about you, if I could just get kind of level-headed here and not holler and scream at you. Well, when when I've had certain prognoses given to me, hey, your sugar's high and you've got high blood pressure and and you feel bad, and boy, fear can overtake you and you can can start having anxiety and and wonder and, and, and be concerned and all that. And then God just helped me. He helped me through His Word to say, Oh, whom shall, what shall I fear? David did one more thing. Verse 10 and 11 and 12, we see David talking to himself still. And he verbalizes that God's in control. Why is that important that we verbalize it? Because the devil can't read your mind. And the devil needs to know that you know that God's in control. If all you need to do is God's in control, God's in control, God's in control, God, you need to say it verbally. There's something about letting the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're going to get to that verse in a minute. There's another part of that verse. But in verse 10 of, of here, Psalm 62, it says this. It says, Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. So he's talking about different things that can come in your life that can sway you and they can be, become distressing to you. And of course, the love of money is root of all evil. And of course, uh, 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 thinking that, hey, I've got, I've, got, uh, I've got something from somebody. I've, I've got a, 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 either by robbery or by uh, being an heir or whatever. Uh, he says, trust not in those things. In verse 11, it says, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. 
You know what mercy is? Not getting what we deserve. Do we all deserve hell? Yes. Do we all deserve to be thrown out in the, on the side ditches? Yes. Are all our faith not where it needs to be? That's right. But thank God that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Do you know what we need to do tonight? If you're distressed, if you're fearful, if you're overwhelmed with your problems or whatever they may be, you need to start verbalizing that who's in control? God is in control. A God God is, is at the helm. God is steering this ship. He's a flying the plane. He's a driving my life. I'm going to trust in Him tonight. I'm not going to let oppression take me over. I'm not going to let riches uh, control me. I'm not going to let the enemy overcome me. We hear it all the time that God's in control, but you need to say it. And you need to believe in it. At the end of the day, it is either our choice to live with distresses, or our choice is to Live in peace that God's are running things. Psalms 107.2, I quoted it, the first part, it says, let the redeemed the Lord say so. The latter part that's often, I don't often quote it, but it says, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Who's the enemy? It's not just talking about a soldier coming across the lines, you know, China coming over. It's talking about enemies sometimes, your own thought process. Your enemies sometimes, your, your own uh, uh, vices, your addictions. Uh, uh, you know what God says? He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say, verbalize that God, 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 take hold of this. Uh, uh, Lord, take the wheel. Help me, Jesus. I need you tonight. When will it be so important to you uh, that you'll scream out and you'll cry out in the middle of the night that I need you, God? This is when we get serious. And God has helped us before, He'll do it again. Talk to yourself. Remind yourself. It's Psalms 37, 25. The psalmist said, I have been young, and I'm now old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. But there's another verse. He is ever mindful and leadeth and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Psalm 78, 19 says, Yea, they spake against God, and they said, King God. Huh. The enemy will question truth. He said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Verse 20, Behold, he smote the rock <laughs> that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can He provide flesh for His meat? I think you know the answer. He let manna rain down from heaven. He snatched it out of the hands of the fat angels in glory land and dropped it down to the people of God in the wilderness. Uh, uh, can He provide a little quail? Hallelujah. Can He provide for you as He did for the, uh, the people of God of Israelites uh, back then? Yes, He can. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. It's just you've got to start talking with your mouth. you start got to get passionate with your voice. And you've got to uh, begin to build your faith so that you will talk about God and talk to yourself about God and convince yourself that He is ever and ever going to be there. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, let the redeemed the Lord say so. All those verses you need to voice. Repeating God's truths of God's actions will eliminate those distresses. It'll help you remember who's in control. I think of, I think of David when he was slaying Goliath. And what he said, that God, you're not going to talk to me. Goliath, you're not going to talk to me like that. David, just a little ruddy of a guy, a little small guy, he trusted God. He had to convince himself. I'm sure through that whole time picking up those five stones and slinging those things, he had to trust and convince himself that I'm not stupid being out here slinging a, you know, I'm, I'm maybe five foot ten and 115 pounds and, and I'm going to go against a, a giant. He had to tell himself. That God is my strength, my shield, my refuge. When we face difficulties, we sometimes forget God's past faithfulness. We see only the detours and the dangerous paths, but look back and you also see the joys of the victory, the challenge of the climb, and the presence of your traveling companions and friends who have promised to never leave you nor forsake you. Though this world breeds huge icebergs, those icebergs are distress and fears, problems. 
our walk and our talks with God and about God will melt them all away. Learn to talk to yourselves, to repeat the truths of God. Question your fears. Answer that God is for you. And declare that God's in control. It's easy to say it. It's hard to live it. But I can tell you to make it a little easier if you keep declaring that God's in control. Who's in control? God's in control. Who's in control? God's in control. God's in control. I'm going to let Him do Hey, God let it bring it. He brought it God brought it to me. I'm going to, he's going to see me through it. The church, we're, we're going to all have to make choices every single day. And I hope your choice will be, I don't want to live in distress. I don't want to live with problems. I, I, want, I want to, if I have to, uh, have to have a problem, I want to overcome those problems through the truths of God's Word. And so not only will I help myself, but I'll help everybody else around me. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, take these words I pray. And help us grow in grace. And Lord, I pray if there's any, anybody here that's listening, whether it be on the internet or, or wherever you're at, the, the radio program, I pray if they do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that tonight they would humbly bow and ask You to save them. Ask You to come into their heart, forgive them of their sin. Lord, I know Your Spirit will direct them and guide them and you, You'll know exactly what they mean and I pray that You would save that one tonight, that two, that, that mama, that daddy, that one that's doubting their salvation. Give them clarity. Father, help us to be a, a lighthouse into this community. And help us to overcome our fears and distresses with Your Word in the, pa- in the past of what You've done. Remind me, dear Lord, remind us that we're more than overcomers. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Help us, I pray. Give us a good night's rest. Help us tomorrow to be a witness wherever we may. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you've, if you've asked the Lord to save you, I hope you'll call me. Uh, reach out, email. You can call 910-471-7822. 471-7822. You can go on the website and find us as well. Uh, let me remind you, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. is drive-in Sunday school and we'll have a drive-in church. The bathrooms will be available. So you don't, if you have to use the restroom, uh, we'll have sanitizer, all that stuff out. So you can run in and take a bathroom break in between services as well. We'll limit the people in the building just to make everybody safe. It, it will be safer than Walmart. Can I get a witness? Amen. I hope you have a wonderful evening. You got any questions or comments, please let, leave them there below or uh, let us know. We love all y'all. We miss you so much. Talk to you later.